Level 100, Pinnacle of Power for a Pokemon. Very few Pokemon ever reach this level. This is a series of videos in which I push Pokemon's levels to the absolute limit by raising them to 100 in unconventional ways and environments. Because, more or less, I'm crazy. This is the Level 100 Gauntlet. I hope you enjoy. In October of 2014, trainers who were lucky enough to receive a code in their emails were able to download a special demo version of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, a month before the game's released. It's actually a charming little demo that features short adventures with Steven Stone, where you explore little Mirage Islands to meet a few characters and battle with the new Mega Evolutions. The game randomly chooses to be Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire every time you boot it up, but you always play as Brendan except he's named Orlando, which I always found a little bit weird. But it's actually a play on Omega Ruby, made a little bit more evident by his Japanese name, which is just Omega. The main thing most people who played this demo may remember is the one Pokémon you're allowed to capture at the end of your first adventure and transfer to the full version of the game. Glalie in most regions, or if you're playing on a Japanese 3DS, Steelix. Back when I played this demo, I was more focused on something else though, wanting to see what a shiny encounter in this game would look like. I sunk 2,000 encounters into wild encounters in the grass here, only to eventually learn that everything you can encounter in the demo was shiny locked, despite what a faked picture of a Pelipper from back then led me to believe. But over time, there were a few shiny sightings in this demo that weren't some sort of pelican hoax. People were reporting finding shiny starters that only sparkled and weren't actually their shiny colors, with video proof. And it turns out that for whatever reason, the set of middle evolution starters that you pick on only your first adventure are the only things in this demo that are not shiny locked. And there are also another couple catches to them. The first and most obvious catch is that they cannot be officially transferred to the full games. And the second is that once you finish your first adventure with the Glalie or Steelix, Steven gives you a different set of fully evolved shiny lock starters the next time you boot up the game, making it so your potential shiny starter can never be used again in this demo after the first adventure. Regardless of all that though, this hunt has always greatly intrigued me and been on my bucket list of hunts to do. So on September 24th of this year, I set out to find this shiny not shiny starter. And though the resets may be a little bit on the longer side, at a little bit under 2 minutes per reset, I had a good time streaming this hunt, and I also did it in a pretty comfy way too. If you have a modded 3DS, which is a process that is surprisingly easy to do, you can use something called input redirection to control multiple 3DSs at once using a controller connected to your computer. This first leg of the gauntlet, the shiny hunt, would be finished on October 9th, two weeks later, while hanging out with my friend Mr. Let's Play It doing some shiny hunting. I wanted to show at least the final reset before I got the shiny in its full entirety without speeding up the footage, but my TV froze in the middle of it, and I had to stop shiny hunting to do a little bit of troubleshooting, so I opted to do some speed up instead. Here's the shiny starter that I found, with a level 100 gauntlet soon to follow afterwards. I've seen so many C dot today. Oh yeah? Like a crazy number of them. It's gotta be an element. You only got one C.O.T. game, right? Yeah. I wonder if Emerald is just 50-50 in emulating Ruby or Sapphire. I want to say it's built off Sapphire as a base. Interesting. It's Ruby based for Fiery Path. Yeah, that's true. I believe it's also going to be based for Meteor Falls. Yeah, no, no, uh, Limit Phone. Shiny Mudkip! I mean, Marsh Dog! Yes! In the demo! The top right game! No! Dude! Way. Shiny Mudkip! I mean, Marsh Dog! That was like, uh, 6,000 something resets! Dude, that's insane! Dude! <laughs> oh, I'm glad you saw that! Sparkling Marsh Tomp! Oh man, all right. Oh my god. My second shiny of the IRL. You can't really see any star on the summary screen there. 
<laughs> the main important thing is that I can't turn this DS off now until this thing is level 100, but for the rest of the IRL, I'll probably just be hunting in Gen 3 and then pick up this gauntlet afterwards. Hanging out with Mr. Let's Play It. We got some uh, Baja Blast this morning. What's up, Internet? Dude. <laughs> um, all right, let's check the summary screen. Got any nature guesses? Bold. Look at that, we got a star, even though it's blue. <laughs> no way. It's a neutral nature, quirky. quirky. Oh, and this is the one that sets the wrong date. It says I got this November 3rd, but that's fine. Takes plenty of siestas. That means it might have a perfect HP IV, potentially. Yeah. But we're gonna have a little adventure with Steven Stone here. And uh, I'll get into a wild encounter with this. <laughs> Blue shiny marsh. Dude. I, we were watching the movie Airplane, my first time seeing that. Um, Hasn't disappointed. Latios so is an airplane. Dude, okay, so. I don't know if anyone's hunted this since the demo came out. It happened randomly to a couple of people in 2014. I guess no one's been stupid enough to, to hunt for something like this that you can't keep, so I don't blame y'all. Um, sparkling Marsh Tomp. <laughs> so wacky. Let's train this guy to level 100 now. Mr. Let's Play It has left. I have folded up the folding table. I have gone for a bike ride that was way spookier than I ever bargained for. I honestly can't tell if people getting rolled is still a prank or if it's a Halloween decoration now. Please don't hurt me. It's a wild lichen rock. It's like Attack on Titan, but like small. And now it's time to get down to business again. It's time to reach the pinnacle of power for a shiny, not shiny, demo marsh tomp. Um, I have this level 35 marsh tomp, right? And I do not have an option to save the game. The game will only auto save when we fully complete this first mission. But by fully completing this first mission, we lose the ability to ever use this particular marsh tomp ever again. In this case, it's especially sad because it's a shiny, quirky marsh top. Quirked up with the, the marsh sauce. So we do have options to train here. We can infinitely train off the wild Pokemon in this grass if we really want to. Like there's a slack off. I can simply smack it. Smack off. We get a little bit of EXP. I believe Steven will infinitely heal our Pokemon too. Yeah. No issue there. And if we white out, we get taken back to Moss Deep City. And we still keep our starter, so there's no issue there either. Am I actually going to train up off these wild Pokemon, though? I don't think I am. I think there's a more efficient way we can go about doing this gauntlet. To get to the more efficient training spot, we need to play through the story of this mission taking down some Team Magma Goons and reaching level 36 in the process. Now starting with the Gen 6 games, they added an EXP bonus if you have an unevolved Pokémon that's above the level where it can currently evolve, so we want to keep this a Marsh Top. So, logically, we should mash the B button here. Like most Pokémon games, you can obviously stop evolution with B, except in this demo. A lot like how you can't cancel a Kadabra evolving into Alakazam through trade evolution, you cannot cancel the evolution of your starter into its final form in this demo. So with my shiny Swampert, I took out the prestigious 25th highest level Grunt in all of Team Aqua, and then met the admins. And then Steven shows up, forces us to learn Hydro Cannon, and gives us a Mega Bracelet so we can Mega Evolve Swampert. Matt! That's me! <laughs> that's my name! There actually is one shiny with a texture in this demo. Steven's Metagross. Seeing both of those sparkle is so cool. All right, now y'all are about to see how cool shiny Mega Swampert looks. It's not even gonna get to sparkle, but um, it's way cooler than shiny Mega Metagross. Trust me on that.
shiny Mega Swampert. All right, welcome to the rest of the demo right here. Swampert needs a little over 1 million EXP to reach level 100, and currently it has 43,508. And we're gonna get the rest of all of that EXP down at the bottom of this cave. We won't be leaving this area for a while now. Now we get some Pokeballs that we will not use for a while. Run into that grass patch, you're guaranteed an encounter with an always not shiny Glalie. The story progresses if you capture this, but for this gauntlet, I'm gonna be smacking it instead. All right, the Glalie goes down and we get 960-ish experience points per Glalie, somewhere in that ballpark. And thankfully that number will never go down because there's no experience for scaling formula in generation six. And we're going to impress this Glalie with our skills by not using our Pokeballs at all and instead running into this grass hundreds of times, nearly a thousand times, honestly until we reach the pinnacle of power for a shiny Swamper. Things would not start out very easy for our Swamper, constantly getting outsped by the Glalie and getting knocked out. But thankfully there's no penalty at all for getting knocked out and we just instantly get healed at this point in the demo. So I just kept infinitely battling this Glalie starting out with the uphill battle that was just overcoming it at the lower levels. Using Mega Swampert was almost a must at this point, but I hope to overcome this eventually in the future, because the Mega Evolution animation took up a lot of time every battle. After a couple levels I decided to multitask and work on the Emerald Professor Oak challenge that I'm making a little movie for. And unexpectedly, this happened in the process. Shiny Whismer, live! What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll show the rest of this encounter when I finish that movie. After a few hours around level 55, Swampert was finally strong enough to not really have to worry about getting knocked out by Glalie or being outsped by it, so I even started to run out of moves sometimes. I ended day one at level 62, about a fifth of the way there. October 10th, got some coffee. <laughs> Just drinking coffee in a very normal way there. Um, and the grind continues. The DS is now open. Things are gonna be easier now. <clears throat> Things are gonna go a lot faster. As long as the Glalie doesn't use Protect. Who needs a Mega Evolution? Actually, we might still. It, it hung on for a second there. Um, never mind. All right, I've been doing this for a little bit. And I realize that it's not efficient for me to be going at this when I only have Mud Bomb, or am I about to struggle? So instead of waiting to get knocked out by struggle, we can just talk to Steven and heal up. I'm gonna just keep doing this with only the move Waterfall. Because Waterfall is easily the best move for this. It's 100% accurate, and we one-shot the Glalie with it. So every time I run out of Waterfall now, I'm going to talk to Steven. Uh, never mind, I don't one-shot it. I one-shot most of them, unless I'm filming and talking about it. 74! A former gamer has uh, informed me that I'm wasting my life on this demo. And as a response to that, I say, uh, level 76? Let's go! From this point on, I just needed to stick to the grind. And what better way to focus on that than streaming? So I streamed a little bit that night. Is this a level 100 gauntlet? 
No. It is actually a um, Telt Nuag 001 VL. And over the course of this stream, I beat Roxanne in my Professor Oak's challenge and reached level 90. But something from this stream felt a little bit off. There was something missing. So on day three, I made it my goal to correct that. Hitting level 100 tonight. Let's do it. The spice that was missing was adding wacky things to the layout. Nuh-uh. Is this like a leaked screenshot from Avatar 2? Because realistically, there was not a lot of interesting gameplay going on with this gauntlet. So I did stuff like work on my toad impression. Dr. Pepper! No, that was terrible. Dr. Pepper! No, that was that was worse. That was definitely worse. Dr. Pepper! Man, I, I just cannot reach the level of shrill that Toad has. I'll have to like emulate the Keegan Michael Key Toad, I think, if I ever want to aspire to do any sort of good Toad impression in my lifetime. After three miserable Toad impressions, the deed was done. Level 100! The pinnacle of power for a Swampert. So, we're now about to have a send-off for the Swampert by following Steven Stone's instructions and hightailing it out of here. Okay, we're actually going to follow Steven's inst instructions here. We're going to catch the Glalie. He's been trying to tell us how to do this for so long. And we're going to do it now. I have five Pokeballs. Let's just toss one. Let's name the Glalie Swampert. See, you can transfer the, the Swampert off the demo. This, this Swampert. After the longest wait between me finding a shiny and saving the game, the gauntlet was complete, and I backed up the save file using Checkpoint on my 3DS. According to my 3DS, this whole journey took 74 hours, with almost 57 of those hours just being hunting for the Marsh Top. I'm happy enough with the journey that I had with this Swampert already, but if you don't want your journey to end, you can go Hacker Man on things and open up the demo save file in PK Hex, where we can copy and paste our Swampert's data to a real save file, where it still won't be fully legit because it has a met location at level 35 in Moss Deep City, which is normally impossible, but it will look like a normal shiny in a real game. However, I don't see this as a real Pokemon to me, so I said farewell to this fake Swampert and knew that the real one, the legend that took down all these Glalie, will forever live on on my demo file. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.